Welcome to Abbey Clubhouse for the review of the Bandai High Grade 172 Bunyi Boomerang from Kyokai Senki or Our Main Warrior at the Borderline. This is the first kit from the series that isn't a Mei list unit, and this guy has gotten a lot of model fans really excited for how unusual it looks, perhaps even more so than the Mei list kits themselves. Getting right down to business, the HG172 Bungie Boomerang was released on October 9th, 2021 for a price of 2,640 yen. The box art is illustrated by Kazuya Igarashi from Planeta, who joins fellow Planeta artist Yuta Otani for the three boxes in this series so far. The box measures 30 by 19 by 7.5 cm, so it is a typical HG box. The short side of the box tells us that this is the second kit in the series, and everything else is repeated from the front of the box. The other side is identical in every way. The long side is all for studio shots of the Bunyi Boomerang showing off mostly the legs. The other side plugs the other kits in the line and reminds you to go watch the TV show and then it's all legal text. Inside the box, we get the kit spread across 9 runners with no polycaps, which is the norm for the line. And we get a very small sheet of stickers with just these three for the eye sensors, which is great news for the kit. The instructions gives us info on the government that deploys the boomerang and no pilots because these guys are AI controlled and they're unmanned. The backside tells us all the parts of the boomerang and gives us a color guide. The inner pages are for assembly instructions. And the entire black and white side is also for some of the instructions, as you'd expect. After about 90 minutes, we have to complete a boomerang that's mostly legs. And these really long legs and that T-shaped torso is what most people are eager to see and have on their shelves. The big flat top is divided into polygonal surfaces, so these are actually all smaller surfaces that make up that bigger shape. The bottom has that same look as well, and the entire underside half is grey, which complements the green on top really nicely. This little white bit up front looks like a little necktie, and I thought I'd just mention that so you'll always notice it. So, of course, the colors here are all properly represented in plastic, and we already knew that from the stickers. But the kit goes the extra mile with the waist here on the backside using a yellow piece for a sliding hydraulic system. The bottom part actually pivots as well, and it moves, but it's really hard to notice. But yes, this kit added a few metallic yellow parts as extra flourish, so you really gotta love the extra effort like this that adds extra value to a kit for us to enjoy. Oh, and this guy also has butt cheeks as well. I thought I'd mention that too, so you'll always notice it. Everything is built right onto the boomerang, so it doesn't hold any weapons or shields or anything. The primary weapon here are the fixed machine cannons on each side that swings along a joint like this. They also turn on a peg here so you can adjust the angle at which it's pointing. And on top of that, the gun swivels vertically so the gun can hit basically anything it wants all around the boomerang. The peg here is on the gun side and it's basically a 3mm peg so you can actually take this and put it on any 30 minute mission kit or any other build that you like. The inside of the gun has these little cutouts that look like ventilation ports, but they also use that to mount the armor on to either side of the gun, so it's actually quite a clever design where they work the actual kit's design into a decorative detail. So what we've been seeing here is the boomerang in the normal patrol state, but it also has other forms too. When it's not being used, it rests in the park state for storage, which we get by tucking up the feet at the very bottom, and then folding up the lower feet up against the middle section. Then on top of that, we actually get a horizontal slit that goes into a corresponding slot on the middle section so the entire leg actually locks together while the armor closes up perfectly. It's really not a complicated process, but a lot of thought was put into making this fit really nicely, and the engineering is exactly as great as it looks here. But really, that's basically all you need to do to have the boomerang in a deactivated park state. It wouldn't be very notable on paper, but the legs morph into a completely new shape after it folds up and that simple act gives the boomerang not only a different look, but it makes a lot of sense as a functional part of the machine as well. And here it is next to the Kenbu in its storage mode side by side. By mass, the two units are about the same, but the way they are stored are not at all similar with the boomerang stacking its mass vertically. Going back to the patrol state. The boomerang also has a high mobility combat state which requires us to lift the head up from its nice little hole right here. And then we'll need to drop the guns down. And in place of these closed panels, we need to swap in the knife arms. Now these arms don't have to be deployed all the time in this way, but I'll have them out for simplicity's sake. 
for the leg, we want to turn up the feet and have it standing on the small surface at the front right here, which requires us to use this little clear piece. So yes, this kit has yellow parts and clear parts, even though the designers very well could have done all of this in gray or white, and we really wouldn't have been that surprised. With the clear part attached, we now have an extended flat surface to stand on. With the feet extended a little bit longer, we have the boomerang in the combat mode. This head now sports an extra two sensors on each side to tell you that it means business, and it can turn side to side on a ball joint. And that neck allows you to position it all around in the 3D space reasonably smoothly. And the inner sides, whether it's the bottom of the head or that exposed area that cradles the head, is all done in grey, which again is a sort of extra bit of color that we wouldn't have been surprised if they left out to save a bit of money. For those adorable little T-Rex knife arms, we get the blades done with that metallic yellow plastic that we saw earlier on hydraulics. It's a lovely little bit of highlight color because the rest of the arm mostly repeats colors that we've already seen like white and grey. The arm is on a ball joint at the very top. It rotates along a peg here. And the very bottom swings vertically, which makes it remarkably similar to the gun arm, but this one right here is more flexible with that ball joint. A bit unfortunate is how the peg here is reversed from the gun arm, with the knife side having a hole instead of a peg. But even if the peg and the hole were reversed, the peg here is a really odd 2.5mm, so you can't easily mix in parts from other kits, or you can't screw around and have 4 gun arms and 4 knife arms. Despite the added height, the chunky legs are strong and heavy, and it balances the kit really well so it doesn't topple easily at all. In this form, you can see the boomerang actually has a full humanoid shape, but just all of it is normally tucked away. I mean, the head and arms look really atrophied, and just look at that cute little bit of reach that the knives have. Look how futile that is in the fight, it's just adorable. But you do get a strong sense that in this form, the boomerang is more agile and more flexible, and it makes sense as a combat form. The legs call to mind the Olympic Sprinter with the blade for his lower feet, and we can certainly believe that these legs are capable of pushing the boomerang forward really quickly when it runs. But just how tall was our boy here anyway? For size comparisons, let's start back in the patrol state and bring in the lower end benchmark, the entry grade RX-78. And then here's the upper end benchmark, the high grade new Gundam. Once again, this is a 172 scale kit, so it's twice the size of 1144, but the outlandish shape of the boomerang makes it look okay with the other kits, and it can easily pass itself off as a mobile armor or something. It's about as tall as New Gundam, but of course we know this isn't actually how tall it is. Changing over to the combat state brings a head height well past the New Gundam and towering over the RX-78 quite a lot. Even so, this still kind of works on the shelf if you really want to show these guys together. It looks strange enough that you might think the size is just a part of the strangeness of the boomerang. Let's go back to the patrol form once more and bring in the Kenbu, and of course let's also have the Bakchi for the entire lineup of kits that we have from the series so far. They're all basically the same height in this form, so even though the boomerang looks kind of like it'd be bigger than the melee units, it's actually not, and it takes up about the same space even though it's a little bit more lean. Now let's go a little bit extreme here, and this is how tall the boomerang is when the legs are fully extended, and the legs alone are taller than the Kenbu. Yeah, I know this isn't a part of the in-universe design, but I bet shooting from higher up like this should be pretty advantageous. This maximum height comes to about 21 and a half centimeters. I don't know what you're gonna do with that information, but it's a big number and we like that. On to the articulation. I won't be repeating the parts I've already covered, so starting from the top, the entire upper torso turns upwards this much. And it dips downwards this much. You'd think it turned all the way around, but the upper torso actually catches the hip, though you still get a really good turn before this happens. The leg can swing outwards this much past 90 degrees. They can rotate along the thighs as well, like this. They kick forward this much until the thigh hits that upper torso. And the kick backwards can go all the way to here if the legs are unfolded. The top joint on the leg folds all the way to 180 degrees, which is needed for the park state. The next joint down can fold all the way up for the same reason. The feet at the bottom can swing upwards and downwards like this. And they can also rotate horizontally as much as you like with nothing getting in the way. And the entire foot can swivel side to side about 45 degrees each way. 
the legs on the boomerang are so well articulated that even at the most extreme angles, you can get it to balance and stand. The secret MVP here are the feet because they are flexible enough that no matter what strange angle that the legs are twisted into, you can always have the feet pointed the right way down and rooted right onto the floor. The articulation hides inside the clean appearance of the boomerang yet you'd never guess how expressive this kid is with just two legs and a waist. In comparison, the arms are also actually very flexible, but they never play much into the poses because of just how dinky they are. It's not the fault of the articulation, and they're all wonderful as we've already seen earlier. With all that said, here's a Hobby Clubhouse 3 point verdict on the Bandai High Grade 172 Bungie Boomerang. Number 1. It's as odd and wonderful as it looks. Model fans are skeptical because we've seen our fair share of kits that look really cool and exciting in studio shots, but when we get it, we feel duped because the kit is just never that special in real life. But the boomerang is as unique and it is as different as the photo suggests. It's interesting to explore and study every part of the design and the kit confidently tells you about how every part of it works in universe. I don't think I have to upsell this much. If you like how it looks, then it won't disappoint you in your hands. And number two, it's amazing for straight building. So some of you guys have asked if there are kits with very few stickers that basically come out of the box accurate to the design. And the boomerang is a stellar example of that. I do have to praise this because both the Kenbu and the Bakshi needed to lean on color correcting stickers to some extent. So this kit bucks that trend by being color complete and beautiful just straight out of the box. As an extension of that, for painting, that means no masking. And I'm sure that alone earns a spot in your backlog if you're a builder. And number three, it's a little bit pricey. Now hear me out on this. I know the Boomerang is a kit with very little flaws, but as a grunt unit, 2640 yen is a little bit pricey. Now that's not unique to this kit and that price is the baseline for all the kit in the series. But I don't think the extra cost from the extra size buys us a lot of extra value. And this is especially felt strongly when the designers did make good use of our money in other places like the grey lining underneath the head, and that yellow working hydraulic on the spine, and the butt cheeks, those aren't free you know. That's a good kind of extra cost that we don't mind, and wouldn't it be amazing if more of that price could be put towards amazing things like this instead of a larger kit. So that's the review of the Bungie Boomerang. It's a much needed compliment to the Mayless kits, and it's a wonderful entry to the first wave of Warrior at the Borderline model kits. Thank you so much for watching. Come look us up on social media with updates on upcoming videos and see peeks at future projects. Links are in the description below. Or hang out here some more with one of these other videos. But before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to be notified of new videos from Hobby Clubhouse, and I'll see you next time.